this year, like, it was one of my goals to make a hundred grand in one month this year. And, and I missed it. You know, if you look here, it says total cash flow in April 2008, $98,000. And it breaks down where the money was from light advances, $17,000, life earns, bonus check, $42,000. $800, loans, $8,100, investments, $21,000, other, other, I don't know what the hell other is, but it was about $1,800. Hey, they could give me all the other income they want. You know, I'll take it. No, it's really from legal, from Primerica Legal Plans. You go, you make $1,800 off that. Yep. You, and I didn't write one. And if you notice here, Personally, I wrote one life app that month. Now, I don't normally write one life app. I normally write a lot more than that. But but that month in particular, I did one sale. I made 98000 bucks. And I'm not letting you know that to brag or to impress you. I want to impress upon you that this is a business of making overrides. This is a business of growing a business. This is a business of recruiting people, growing a relation with them, licensing them, training them so that they could go grow their own business. And in the process of them growing their own business, you make a crap load of overrides. I mean, 98 grand is, I mean, it, now, if Jimmy would earn 98 grand in one month, it would be tragic. I mean, Tammy would be like, what in the hell's going on, Jimmy? How'd we make only 98000 this month. But for us, 98000 was a lot of money. So I just wanted to open your eyes with that. I wanted you to see recruits, 268 recruits. That's right here. But Omar recruited personally two. So I recruited two, but my organization recruited 268 people. They go, well, how does that happen? I'm going to train you on that, exactly how that happens. Because who would like to recruit like one or two and then look up and your business recruited 300? Anybody would like that idea? But in order to do that, you got to grow a business. Licensed reps, newly licensed representatives. We did 30 plus licensed reps. That's over one new licensed representative in your business per day in a month. Now, you guys know how hard you got to work to get one licensed rep in a month, right? Just imagine if you got one every day and the majority of them, you don't even know them. How's that grab you? I mean, it is cool when you got reps walking up. Hey, how you doing? I'm like, oh, you're in Primerica. Yeah, oh, great. Who you with? You. And I go, really? What regional vice president office are you in? No, 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 no. I'm in your office. I'm like, well, now I really like you. Nice to meet you. Isn't that crazy? Now, that didn't happen overnight, but it happened almost overnight. I mean, it really did. And then you look, look, how you make money is you have other guys making money, okay? These were our direct regional vice presidents that month, okay? Joe Ortiz made 8000 bucks a week that month. I mean, 8000 a week times how many weeks in a month? Or what is that a month? $32,000. Joe Ortiz. I recruited Joe when Joe was 23 years old and was working at freaking Tire Kingdom changing tires. Okay? Now he's making $32,000 a month. Wayne Luke made $29,000 in change that month. When I recruited uh, Wayne, he was a mortgage broker with emphasis on the word broker. Because this was, this was prior to the real estate and mortgage boom. He was only making like a grand a month. I made mean, $29,000, you know. Every time I'm at his home, his beautiful wife runs up to me and gives me a big hug and a big kiss. And why? Because I changed their life. Evelyn made Twenty-one thousand twenty-two. Rick made seventeen thousand. Now 
TJ and R, they were new RVPs. They had just gotten promoted to RVP, and one made 9900 If you round that up, that's 120 grand a year income as a new RVP. And Art was uh, Kevin Grant, and actually Art will cross the ring this week. So every direct RVP of mine has a ring. And then we got RVPs under those RVPs, and those guys got rings. And then we got RVPs under those RVPs, and those guys got rings. And that's how all this recruiting happens is when you got guys who have rings on your team, they know what they're doing, unless they're the loan guy. I got a ring, but I'm the loan specialist. Or I'm the investment guru guy. And, you know, I mean real rings, not the black onyx ones, the one with the letter P on it, the recruiting rings and all of that stuff. And speaking of rings, if you notice, this one has the black onyx on it. I have the other one. The other one's gold. I wore that with the Rolex yesterday. I had this old one just laying around the house. I said, you know, I got this nice white gold Breitling Evolution Mac Daddy watch. I said, why don't I change this ring into a white gold? And I winged it all out. And, you know, it's all about options. You know, I wake up, am I in the mood to wear a white gold or yellow gold? Am I in the mood to wear a Breitling or a Rolex? Am I in the mood to drive my Jaguar or my BMW? I mean, I, it's all about options. Wouldn't you agree? So let me start. By the way, let me check if you were listening last night. How is everybody this morning? Excellent. Quite impressed. You always hear up in North Florida, y'all are s slower learners, but you're not. I think. Just kidding. Just kidding. Come on. All right. What if I told you? What if I told you that if you recruited just two recruits a month, just two direct recruits a month, and you did that for 12 years straight, but you had to do it every month. There's not a month where, you know, you don't do Like even on this paper here, if you notice, personal recruits, new recruits, how many does that say? Two. Even though I only did one life app that month, I normally do more, but that month I recruited two. What if I told you that if you recruited two direct recruits every month for 12 years straight, but you don't miss a month? Because whenever you miss a month, you got to start over again, let's say. That at the end of 12 years, okay, you would be a millionaire. You would have not had any credit card debt for the last 11 years. You'd be living in a multi time million dollar home you'd have not one car like jimmy was bringing up his nice car i got two cars that are each worth a hundred grand and i know you might go well that's stupid it's stupid if you don't have the money to do it you got the money to do it it's pretty fun i got my weekend car and i got my fna car because my red jag xkr sports car i mean you don't want to drive up to a home in that, and you definitely don't want to drive into the hood in that, if you know what I'm talking about. Go jack my rims like nothing. Hey, I grew up in the hood, I know. And what if I told you, if you just recruited two people a month for 12 years straight consistently, that at the end you'd have a 900 grand a year income, have freedom to do what you wanted to do, who would recruit two recruits a month? Raise your hand. Okay, now, Note, every hand went up, other than those who are retarded. Either retarded or just plain lazy. You know, I don't want to raise my hand. If you don't want to raise your hand, you're not going to recruit recruits, okay? But anyways, I am going to prove to you that that's all you got to do because I got all the numbers you know, to prove it because that's all I did. Now, I didn't just recruit two directs though i recruited two directs but then underneath those guys i recruited more people and i related to like drilling for oil if you were to drill for oil would you drill down like one inch into the ground and be like oh no oil here let's go look around elsewhere no you got to dig 
deep, you got to drill deep. And eventually, if you're in the right location and you drill deep enough, you will strike oil. Oil in the, in the trimerical world is a regional vice president. For every regional vice president you have that at least makes 100 grand a year, you will make 100 grand a year in um, override income. So imagine if you had 12 direct RVPs making 100 grand each, you'd at least be making a million too. That's like owning an oil well that is always gushing nonstop. And so you have to drill deep in order to strike oil. So I recruited not only two directs a month, but I probably recruited hundreds and hundreds a year for some years now. And that has given me this great life I got. Now, you have to understand why to recruit. Because I could remember when I was new and I heard the word recruiting, I cringed. When I heard investment business, I was like, oh, very prestigious investment business. I want to do that. When I heard loans at the time, now mortgages isn't very prestigious nowadays. They're all scumbag mortgage brokers that ripped everybody off. But at the time, it was a very prestigious thing is what it looked like. But when you heard life insurance, you wanted to throw up. And when you heard recruiting, you were like, no, I ain't do that. Now, that was the way that I viewed it. And I'm sure that's the way a lot of new recruits view it when they're new. The reason is they don't understand the why. Now, be honest. If when you were new, you were a little bit negative on recruiting, raise your hand. Look around the room. Almost, I'd say three quarters of the room, their hands went up. The other quarter, either you were just a little naive or you're lying, one of the two. Because the, the recruiting connotation denotes like, multi-level marketing Amway or it's just a negative thing unless you understand why. And so in order, you know, to move you to do anything, you have to understand why it's good to do it. Because if you don't understand that, you'll never do it. No matter how many times they let you know to recruit, 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 you'll never do it. So number one reason why you must recruit every organization that is worth its weight in gold is very good at recruiting. I live in Miami. I root for the University of Miami. They have won five national champions. I know you guys like the Gators up here, but you guys just won two. You've only won two, so don't get your, and you're losing this week versus Oklahoma. But anyways, I got wagers if you want it. You don't want none of this. No, I'm just kidding. Now, listen, I, it's not the way to win over the crowd, Omar, you know, I'm, but listen to what I'm saying. You can even use University of Florida. In the years that they won the national championship and you have, their staff recruited great athletes onto their team. They recruited great coaches onto their team. If, if they didn't recruit great players, they would not have won anything. You look at our Dolphins, okay? I love the Dolphins. I've always loved the Dolphins. I watched every miserable game last year when we only won one game. But they recruited a leader named Bill Parcells this year. And Bill Parcells recruited a great head coach and a great coaching staff. And together, they went out and they recruited some great players and brought them over. And in one year's time, they went from the worst team in the league to the AFC East champions in one year. That's like unheard of to do. It was done due to recruiting, though. I want you to understand every business recruits. And, and, and most of us who are new in Primerica, who have never worked in business, who've never owned our own, we don't understand that. And then we walk in here and we hear recruiting and we view it as negative and we're afraid of it. And we don't understand it, so therefore we don't do it. And so that's why I'm trying to get you to understand it. Bill Gates dropped out of Harvard. You all know who Gates is, right? Like the richest man on the planet. He owns Microsoft. And uh, he dropped out of Harvard. And he recruited a few guys with him. And this grant 
created what is now Windows and they brought it public and they became billionaires. What if they would have recruited the wrong guys and it just wouldn't work? You, you just never know. How about Harvard? Harvard's a very prestigious institution. They recruit all the time. They only recruit the cream of the crop, though, not the cream of the crap. And the reason they recruit is they want to have the best students at their institution be future world leaders and the future business leaders because they want it known that they graduated from Harvard. It's more perceived. They recruit. The Army, the Navy, the Air Force, the Marines. I love our military. I, I mean, I'm so proud to live in the United States of America. And, and, and right now, recruiting into the military is a pretty hard gig, I would say. Hey, join the Army and get a rocket up your ass. Come on, let's go. But they still out there recruiting people, and they're still recruiting people. And if it wasn't for them, we would be in trouble, I think. Don't you think? So you have to understand how awesome and powerful recruiting is and what a weapon and what a tool you have in your hands that most of you are not even using. And honestly, when you have an individual like me, like Jimmy, that understand recruiting and then you're surrounded by people that don't understand it, it drives you pretty nuts. Because if you only would know what we know, and if you would only do what we did, man, you'd live the life we have, and it would be so awesome for it. Mean, it would be unbelievable. So the number one reason that you must recruit is every organization that is good recruits, and if you want to grow a good organization, you have to be a recruiter, and that's the reason you're here is to grow a good organization. Number two, the only way to ever have true freedom is to recruit people, recruit and train and license people. I know guys in Primerica have been here 25 years plus that still got to go right business. To me, that is sad. And I'm like, oh, no, I like to do it. Bullshit. If you were making a million dollars a year not writing a client, you wouldn't go write a client. Boy, son. Hasn't written a client in 20 years. With the shock price down, he might go out and write a few. No, I'm just kidding. But, but, but do you understand if you just, re that's the only way to ever get freedom is to grow an organization that grows without you. They recruit without you. They train without you. They write clients without you. They change clients' lives without you. And in essence, you're changing those clients' lives because if you didn't grow that organization, they wouldn't be out doing all the work. So the only way to have freedom is recruiting, and it's the fastest way to help people too. I mean, let's say like, like there are two guys in Primerica, Mike Wells and Norman De Silva. They earned a million dollars last year on their own pen. I mean, they are true champions. They love the business. They love what we do. They love what we stand for, all that kind of stuff. But I will take the 900 grand that I make over the million that they made any day of the week because I made it in overrides and they were out there working their rear end off. If you just learn how to recruit people, you can help a lot more people because no matter how good Wells is and no matter how good Norman De Silva is, they are not going to write up as many clients as our organization writes up. Last month alone, we wrote up 300 life clients. We wrote up 392 investment clients. So no matter if you're the best, you know, if you have an S on your chest and you're just the greatest primary rapper, you're not going to write up all those clients in one month. So it's the greatest way to help people. It's the fastest way to help people is, you know, to recruit. So if you're here to help people, because you always hear that, oh, I just joined, I'm not interested in the money. I'm just interested in helping people. You ever hear that? I use it against them. I'm like, really? Is that really why you joined? Yes. Well, who are you helping? Well, uh, you're not even helping yourself. You got to be able to help yourself first before you can help other people. If you are broke, who are you going to help? How much money are you going to give to your church if you are broke? Zero. You are the one at the church needing the rich guys to give you money. 
So if you're really here to help people, let's start by helping yourself. And the fastest way to help yourself is to recruit people. And the fastest way to help other people is to recruit people. I'm just giving you the reasons why, because I want you to understand before I go into the numbers and explain exactly what I did, how I did it, okay? Um, you need to have a different view of recruiting. Let me give you this example. Let's say that I hired you at a job. Let's say you work for Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs, even though the stock's down, is still the most prestigious investment bank on Wall Street. And so let's say that I hired you. Now, I want you to really visualize this. I want you to understand this. I hired you, and your job is to go hire people so that they can enter our management training program at Goldman Sachs. And if they're good enough, if they're tough enough to make it through the training program, and we choose to make them a branch manager, you will make $100,000 each one that we let run a branch. Now, you can hire anybody you want. There's no prerequisites. They don't have to, you know, graduate from Yale. And whoever you hire, if they don't make it, we're not going to penalize you. You just go hire as many people as you can, and if they make it through our training process and make it to branch manager at Goldman Sachs, we will give you a hundred grand a year for the rest of your life. Now, if you viewed it that way, how many people would you go recruit? As many. Now, would you go to the mall and try to recruit a stranger? Would you try to recruit the wino at the gas station? Would you try to recruit? Or would you make a list? All right. They're going to be in the Goldman Sachs train. They'll, if they land this job, they can make 100 to a $1 million a year, and I can hire anybody I want. Why don't you make a list of everybody you loved? Your brother, your sister, your mom, your dad, cousins, uncles, aunts, friends growing up. Wouldn't you want to give them that opportunity before you gave that opportunity to anybody else? Wouldn't you? Because if they don't make it, you're not penalized and if they make it they live a great life and you make a hundred grand see that's what primerica is see i really believe the difference in those that recruit and those that do not recruit other than when you're new you're a little afraid you don't believe but you can get over that part but the reason you don't get big is you don't view recruiting in the right way see that's the way i view recruiting like i am hired to I'm working at this big company and I'm hired to recruit people, stick them in a training program. Those that are, you know, strong enough, you know, to make it through, to make it to branch manager or what we call regional vice president, because that's all a regional vice president is, is a branch manager. You run your own office. I'm just using the lingo of the regular world. Okay. A branch manager. And for every one of those that makes it through, I make $100,000 plus a year. So why wouldn't I go recruit people? See, if you viewed it the right way, you would do that. Now, have you ever viewed it the way I just explained it? Raise your hand if that's the way you viewed it and you always viewed it that way. Not one hand went up. And, and, and so it's all the way you think. The difference between rich guys and those that are not rich is just the way they think. We're not any greater. We just think differently. You must understand people have a track record of quitting. It's not your fault. If you recruit a person and they quit, don't beat yourself up. They have a track record of quitting. I mean, just look at the universities. I mean, imagine. Try to remember back when you graduated high school. All your friends tried to go to college. They tried it. Maybe it was a local little college. Maybe they went away to a university. But at the end of one year, out of all your friends that went, you know, to school, I bet you half of them either dropped out or quit. And they all had a rational excuse. I need money. I don't have money. It's usually money, right? But they quit. And then if you made it the next year, a whole nother group of them quit. If you made it 
for your junior year, a whole nother group. If you actually graduated from college, there's only a handful of your friends that started college that actually made it through. So they quit. It's not the universities. Well, you see, I do stutter. You're like, man, you weren't stuttering. Now you're all screwed up today. In the mornings, I'm not as good as the nighttime. But do you understand? It's not that there's anything wrong with the university if all these licky-do guys quit. Maybe you're one of those that quit. I guarantee if we raised our hand, and I won't do it, but if we ask you, who ever registered in a class in college, raise your, I'm sure 90% of the room's hand would go up. And if I said, now leave your hand up if you actually graduated from college, I, I mean, you'd have maybe 20%. And the rest of you, Jinger, you quit. But you have a track record of quitting New Year's resolutions. It was just New Year's Eve the other night. Who made a New Year's resolution? Raise your hand. Don't lie. Who's ever made a New Year's resolution? Raise your hand. Okay, who's actually went through and did it? But all the hands just went down. It's just people are brought up, you know, to quit. They learn it at a young age. It's a very nasty habit. So you have to understand the numbers in Primerica. And when you're recruiting people into your business, don't get discouraged when they quit. Expect it. Treat them like they're a stud. Treat them like they're a hero. Love all over them. But if they quit, don't let it hurt you mentally. Gym memberships every January. Short the roof. They actually do more gym memberships in the month of January than they do the whole year. And if a gym is only able to hold 180 members in it, they'll do 1,900 memberships. You go, how are they going to have 1,900 people in the gym? They're not. They know 1,800 of them will quit within 90 days. They don't go, oh, the gym sucks. They the gym's fault that we're overweight. It's our fault. How many diets have you started that you quit? I got a million of those. Understand the numbers. Here's what's great. If you understand people and you understand it's in their nature to quit and you understand the numbers are the numbers are the numbers, the numbers cannot beat you. They cannot beat you. If you know two out of 100 that you recruit will be and RVP, and I'm going to prove that. I'm going to prove it to you. I have the number. I have my numbers for the last 12 years. And prove it to you. If you knew that two out of every 100 that you recruited are RVPs, all you need to know is how many regional vice presidents you want in your business and go out and do the numbers and it'll happen. It's crazy. And anyways, so here's the steps you need to grow your business. This is exactly what I go over with brand new recruits. And I explain it to, I'm very crystal clear at explaining the whys in the business. As a trainer, if you're not a good trainer, it is because you do not explain why they have to do things. You just let them know what they need, you know, to do. And you expect them to do it. And they're not going to do it unless you explain to them why it's good for them to do it. Step number one, because everybody's worry is I'm going to run out of people to see. That's everybody's new recruits worry is, oh, my God, I got my Uncle Joe to see, and I got my brother, and then I got nobody else to see. So I asked them, okay, I said, if they're married, I ask them, when were you guys married? Oh, we were married eight years ago. Okay, great. Well, how many guests were at your wedding? Oh, like 100, 125. Okay, great. Now, if they're not married, I'll ask them, or, you know, you'll have them young guys who have no interest in ever getting married. So I'll ask them, if ESPN gave you a million dollars and you had to blow it on a sporting event that you wanted to watch and you could bring however many friends you want, but it's a million dollars. If you don't use a million, you lose it. How many friends and relatives would you bring with you to whatever sporting event you wanted to go see? Oh, man, I bring 180 people. Great. Now you just know they know 180 people because they'll always lie to you and say, I don't know anybody. So you have to get it out of them up front. 
So let's use the wedding list deal, right? I got 100 names on my wedding list. Let me ask you, Brett, out of the 100 people, would you estimate that every one of them at least knows 10 people that you do not know? And they normally go, oh, they, they know more than that. Yeah, yeah, but let's just assume on the low end they each know 10 people. Yeah, okay. So that's 100 that you know, and they each know 10. 10 times 100 is what? 1,000 people. Now, out of those 1,000 people, do you think they know 10 people that you don't know? Well, yeah, of course, because I don't even know them. So, of course not. Okay, that's how many people? 10,000 people. And those people, 100,000. And yet, we got new recruits going to the malls. I love when you go, I'm going prospecting. You know what I envision? A little yellow hat with a light on it, you know? And you're underground in a tunnel, and you're going prospecting. It's the most stupidest thing I hear in Prime America, and I hear it every damn day, and it frustrates the crap out of me. I'm going prospecting. It's retarded. Grow some marbles and write your wedding list down and go visit your friends and relatives that you love and get referrals from them. At least they're not like strangers that won't trust you. You have kind of a credibility thing with them. If I ask Brett, hey, Brett, who do you know who's very motivated, who's always looking to earn extra income, who's, who, who really hates their job? And he goes, Mark Young, he's a good friend of mine, and he hates his job, and he's always looking to earn extra money. Would you let Mark know that I'm going to give him a call? And then I ring up Mark. Hey, Mark, you don't know me, but I'm good friends with Brett, and Brett let me know that you're very motivated. Is that true? What is he going to tell you? No, I'm a slacker and a loser. I'll say, well, yeah, that's true. Well, listen, I was wondering if you're able to help me out. I'd like, you know, to meet with you for a half hour, explain to you what I'm looking for. I'm really looking for people that want to make an extra grand a month chart time. And if it works out that way, maybe even quit their jobs and earn 100 grand a year income. Now, you don't do that until you've gone through your 100 that you know. Because that 100 that you know is where you develop the level of skill that it takes to make that call. You don't just jump in the water and try to make that call and you have it and you got 99 other names on your list. Your warm market, if you viewed it the right way, your warm market is there as a training ground. That's what your warm market is. You see, your warm market is not going to listen to you anyways. If Brett was a high school education teacher in history and he went, you know, to his brother and said, listen, I'm an expert in investing and insurance. Well, his brother said, bro, you are a history teacher. You don't know crap about crap. And he's not going to listen to him. But now if Brett brought me to the house and Brett's working with me and I'm licensed and I've worked in the business, I'm an expert now. He'll listen to me. So your warm market is your training ground. It's where you develop the skills and learn the skills so that you can work in everybody else's warm market forever. So don't use that script that I just used until you went through the 100 names on your list because you can screw it up with them all day long, and if they like you, it's okay. And that's how you improve, and that's how you develop, and that's how you get better at the business. Okay, so... Step number one is the wedding list, and then you explain to them 100 names, and do they know X number of people, and that's 1,000. Do they know 10 people? It's like that. And so you want that out of their head that I'm going to run out of people. See, you're going to have 10,000 warm leads, you know, to see we're going to use the 100 to develop your skill so that you're good enough, you know, to work them leads and really get great results out of that. Step number two is to use the list. Okay, you don't know how many people like I just recruited this girl, Flora. Actually, it was a lead I got from Jason Gills. He rang me up. He's like, hey, there's this there's this girl that lives right in your neighborhood. I said, all right. So I interviewed her. I recruited her and I'm working with her. And we reviewed her list. She had a great list. I went over to Scripps. The next day, the woman rings me up and says, hey, I got three appointments. I go, great. Which ones were they off your list? Were they the ones I asterisk that I wanted you to line up? Oh, well, no, no, no. This is a neighbor of mine, and this is another product. I said, Flora, 
Remember when we went over that list? Yeah, I asterisked the names that I wanted you to set up. I don't want you to, we'll visit your neighbor when you're trained. You'll visit your neighbor. I ain't gonna go visit your neighbor. When you're trained and you got the level of skill, and I just wait, because every recruit's natural tendency is to avoid their list because they don't understand. And you as trainers do not make them understand. So most trainers would be like, oh, you got appointments? Great, let's go out on them. And they would have went out and it would have been not warm market and it wouldn't have worked out. And then the, the recruit would be like, oh, this crap really doesn't work. And then they quit. And then you got nothing out of it. Whereas if you were just a strong, disciplined trainer and you had the right way to do it and you just did it the right way every time and you were, you were very up front with them and very honest and you explained the why we need to go visit the warm market first and you did it the right way, you'd have much greater results. You really would. So use the list. Number three is learn the scripts. Whatever script you use, every after, oh, my, oh, my, oh my. What, what's the exact words you say? Like that matters. Let me ask you a question. If you're a new recruit and you're working in your warm market and it's your brother, it's your cousin, it's your best friend, it's your Uncle Joe, it's your dad, you're not going to use a script anyways. See, that's another reason why we want you to work in your hot market. Because if it's your brother, you say, look, bro, I'm working this new business. I need to do a practice presentation with you and your wife on Wednesday. Oh, man, what's it all about? Don't give me no crap. I'm driving over Wednesday. Be there because I don't want to look like a jerk. If you're not there, I'll look like a jerk, and I really want to work at this place and blah, 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 blah. So do you understand the importance of being in that hot, warm market? Because you can be direct with them and honest with them and still get great results, whereas if it's a lukewarm market, they'll re Anybody have a rescheduling problem? Raise your hand. Don't lie. See, I don't have that. I don't have that because I'll only work in their hot market. And the way we close it is we say, listen, Uncle Joe, I really, really, really like working here. If for whatever reason you need to reschedule, at least let me know 24 hours in advance because I don't want to look like a jerk. I mean, the trainer's blocking off that night, you know, to train me. And if you reschedule, I got nothing to train me on. So it's very important that if you do need to, re I mean, I really appreciate the help, but if you need to reschedule, at least warn me 24 hours in advance. Okay, please. All right. All right. All right, Omar. All right. I mean, do you promise me? Yeah, yeah, I promise you. He ain't going to reschedule. Now, if it's a lukewarm, if it's your neighbor, he don't give a shit about you. He's like, ah, oh, if, if the guy didn't remember, it's Monday night. I want to watch Monday night football tonight. I didn't remember it was Monday night. Oh, man, I'm not able to meet with you. Rescheduling. If you work in the warm market like Art Williams always did, and you work warm market to warm market to warm market to warm market. Now, I'll explain later with uh, the numbers. Number four is learn how to handle objections. Now, if you're working in the hot market, you don't really need to learn how to handle many objections. What's it about, Omar? It's about an hour, Uncle Joe. That's what it's about. No, 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 no. I mean, what's your present say? No, no, Uncle Joe, listen. I'm brand new. I don't want to try to explain it to you because I'll screw it up. I really need the practice presentation. Let my train. I promise you, you don't have to order nothing that night. You don't have to give any money that night. All you got to do is listen, learn, and ask questions. The more questions, actually, I want you to ask a lot of questions because the more questions you ask, I learn more. And this is a training presentation for me. That's the only objection you got to learn if you're working in the hot market. Now, if you're not working in the hot market, then you got to learn all these other advances, which you will learn to do as you work in your hot market because they will give those objections to your trainer and you will watch your trainer answer all the objections and that's how you learn it so that now you don't need to always work in your hot market. You need to work in your, in your hot market for a limited amount of time so you learn the business. And then you can work anywhere. I mean, you could drop me a Cuban guy in Nebraska, and within 90 days, I'd have an office up and running and recruiting going on and newly left. Why? Because I have the level of skill in Primerica where I'm able to do it anywhere. But I developed that skill in my warm market 
And then after I learned the groundwork of it in my warm market, then over the years, I've really improved and developed. And now you could drop me anywhere. I mean, look at Brett. He moved from Virginia, you know, to Florida. He didn't know anybody, I mean, other than his wife. And you have a rocking office right now. I mean, so once you learn the skills, you could do this anywhere, but you got to learn the skills. Now, after you have your list, all 100 names, here's the secret. You ready? Because everybody goes, all right, Omar, now that we're not on stage and all, what's the real secret? How do you really grow this business? Like, there's a secret. Like, I wouldn't tell you what it was. So this is it. So do not ask me later, what's the secret? I will smack you. Unless you're larger than I am, then I won't smack you. But anyways, after you have the 100 names, go do 100 appointments. Do the 100 appointments. Here's all you got to say. Hey, Brett, this is Omar. I'm working this new business. I need to do practice presentations. They don't count as practice presentations if you and Andrea are not there together. Now, if they're not married, go do once you done your initial training presentations with your trainer. Now you're on your own. Go do appointments, a hundred of them to everybody you know. And do it in 90 days. And what'll happen is if you went and did a hundred appointments, whether they're recruiting appointments or they're FNA appointments, whatever, you did a hundred appointments. How good on a scale of one to 10, one, being horrible, 10 being awesome. How good would you be at doing a presentation after you did 100 of them? Eight, nine, 10? How good would you be at doing the FNA in the FNA input form? Eight, nine, 10? How good would you be at getting closing questions done, closing commitments? Eight, nine, 10? After 100 of them? How good would you be at closing, closing a life sale, a recruit, a mutual fund, a more, anything? How good would you be? Eight, nine, 10. How good would you be at getting referrals? How good would you be at recruiting? How good would you be at the products? How good would you be at building? If you're able to get to a level eight, nine, 10 in the next 90 days, why would, and you understood it. And you understood what it would mean to your life if you were able to get to an eight, nine, or 10 level. Why wouldn't you do that? I understand you're scared and you're chicken shit and you don't want, I'm nervous. I don't know what to say. You're going to learn what to say in the 100 appointments. Because after every one, you will visit your trainer. You're like, okay, listen, this is what happened on this one. This is what I said. This is what he said. This is what, what would you have done? Oh, well, I would have done this and this. Okay, and then you learn, and then you move on to the next one. And you learn, you move on to the next one. And you learn, you move on to And after 100, do you know how good you are? And you're freaking unbelievable. But very few people ever do that. I did that. I went out on a crap load of appointments in those nine months where I was new, and I didn't make a lot of money at all. You guys looked at the numbers, but I learned enough skills so that in the next 90 days, I made 12 grand in 90 days. And the next year, I got the watch. And the next year, I got the ring. And every single year, I grew my income, income, income. Very few people will do what it takes. And you know what? That's just the way it is. I know the numbers. I understand the numbers. I don't let the numbers get me down. If I recruit a person and they quit on me, that's not my problem. It's their problem. Next, I got relatives. I make 900 grand a year. Not one relative works in the business with me. Not one. I love them to death. I want them to work with me. I want them to live a great life like I got. I don't want them, you know, to have worries about their job, didn't give them their Christmas bonus, or, or they got this problem or that problem. I don't want them to do But you know what? I can't go do the 100 appointments for them. All you got to do is 100, that's the price. Go do 100 appointments and you get so good that you can make money. You can get promoted to RVP. You can own your own business. You can develop other RVPs and you get rich. And then you live the dream. If you really looked at it, does it look that hard? If you really understood the reward and what we're asking you to do, is it that much of a price to pay? I don't believe it is. I mean, I believe those that went, you know, to law school and, 
and were eight years in school and went into hundreds of thousands of dollars into debt so they might make 100000 I think that's a huge price they got to pay. I think the price of 100 appointments so you can live the dream is very small. And unfortunately, most of you guys won't do it. But I hope that a few of you, I hope, look, I know the numbers. I know that in this room, there will be a few of you that at the end of this week, I say, man, that Omar guy changed my life. I am going to do exactly what Omar told us to do. And you are going to go out there and you are going to do it. And eight years from now, you'll, you'll be a millionaire. You'll have no debt. You'll be living his dream life. And I had a little to do with it. You did all the work. I just kind of changed the way you viewed things. That's all. And that's why I do all these schools. You know, I don't really enjoy leaving my wife and leaving Brady and leaving Olivia and, you know, but I enjoy changing lives and, you know, helping other people. And, and so that's why I do these schools. And so in closing, I wanted you to look at these numbers. We ought to have them up here. I want you to visually see how it worked. Because remember what I told you, how many recruits do you need to recruit per month direct? And then what do you have to do with them? Drill what? Deep. You got to strike oil, right? So look. Okay, 1996 was year one. I recruited how many people? 17. My whole team in total recruited 25 people. We did in premium 45, and I made a little money. Next year, 1990s. Seven, I recruited 27 people. My whole team in only recruited another 12. So I recruited 27 and only another 12 out of that was recruited. Premium numbers, we did almost 88 grand. I made the watch. 1998, I recruited 20 people. My team almost recruited 80. Premium, we did 223,000. I made 100 grand. I still wasn't a recruiter yet. I still had not duplicated myself. If you notice, there wasn't a lot of duplicates. If I would have duplicated myself, those 20 recruits would have each recruited 20, and I would have had like 140. I had 80. Next year, 99, the Las Vegas year, you know, I only recruited 14 people. My team recruited 94. So it was starting to happen. This ain't an overnight deal. I don't want you to think, hey, in 90 days, I'm going to be wealthy and, you know, have this big business. We did 245 in premium. I made 80 grand. And then this was a year I made the decision. 2000 was my year that I made my decision. And so that year I recruited 40 directs that year. And my team recruited 280 people. I recruited 40. My whole team recruited 280. We did 393 in premium. I made 215 grand. I said, I could do this. This ain't so bad, recruiting 40 people. Next year, 01, I recruited 24. My team recruited 465. Premium income. 02, I recruited 21. My team recruited... 459. That was a year I was away on the honeymoon the whole year, vacationing. We still recruited 459. Without me, there's our premium and our income. 03, I recruited 34 directs. We recruited almost 600 people that year, premium and income. Next year, I recruited 24 directs. We recruited 1,115 people. Premium, we did a million two. That's a hundred grand a month in premium. Next year, I recruited 24. We recruited 1,639 people. I would have never thought we would recruit 1,000 people a year. I mean, I used to hear Jimmy's number. And like, How do these people recruit all these people? I didn't understand if you learn how to do it and you train others how to do it, that duplication does happen. But if you, the leader, never went out and did the 100 appointments 
and did all. How could you expect anybody else to do it? You don't even know how to train them to do it because you didn't do it. Train yourself how to do that first so you can train other people how to do it so duplication can start happening in your business. And so that year we did a million and a half in premium. We made over a half million dollars. Next year, I recruited 26 directs. 1,910 recruits that year. Premium was a million nine, almost 800 grand in income. Year after that, I recruited 15. That was the year I moved into my new house and I started decorating it. I'm a decorator. We recruited 2,600 people while I recruited how many? 15. I recruited 15. My business recruited 2,600. I'll take it. We did 2.2 million in premium. I made $860,000. And I was home that year, decorating, meeting with decorators and looking at drapes and beads on the drapes and dining room chairs and materials and bedding and color and woodwork. And it's a lot of job decorating a house. I don't mean a little house that you can drive to rooms, you know, to go and say, oh, let me have that living room set and just bring it to my house. I mean a real house. 08, 24 direct, 3,365 recruits, 2.8 million. I made over 900 grand this year. If you look at the totals, 310 direct recruits was the price. In total, we recruited 12,000 plus recruits, but I only recruited 310. If you work out the numbers, that only averages to two recruits a month, just like I explained to you at the beginning. Two re and remember I told you, how many, how many out of 100 that you recruit are regional vice presidents? What was that number I said? So how many did I recruit? 300. So using those numbers, I ought to have how many RVPs? Six. Those are my direct RVPs. Wayne, Joe, Evelyn, Rick, PJR. How many is that? Six. Isn't that scary how the numbers work? They work so exact. The numbers can't beat you. If you are willing to go through the numbers and work the numbers and do the aggravation and answer the new recruit's stupid questions a million times over and over and over again, where you want to rip your hair out and you want to flap them and you want to choke them, you got to love them and you got to hug them and you got to praise them and let them know how great they are and answer all their stupid questions over and over. And eventually a few of them get it. And you have six direct ring wearing RVPs and you make 900 grand a year. And in my base shop, we got like eight or nine directs that are regional leader. that in the next 12 months, you know, to a year and a half, we will double the number of direct RVPs in the next two years. So it took me 12 years to get six directs. It's going to take me two years to double it. It's like it took me 10 years, you know, to accumulate a million dollars. And it only took me another two years to get another million multiplication, duplication. Now, you see, those are the direct RVPs, and underneath those, we got more RVPs with rings. And underneath those, we got, I'm not doing, I didn't train those guys. I didn't even know half of them. They got reps on their organization. I don't even know. How awesome is that, to override people you don't know? I remember when I knew everybody on my team. I knew whether they were right-handed, left-handed. I knew their address, their birth date, their wife's name, their kid's name, their blood type, because there was only eight of us. Now there's 800. In my base, now I ran this like in June. I had 120 plus codes. In the hierarchy at that time, I had 750 codes. That was a 900 grand. This was in June when I crossed 900 grand in June. So you can assume if you have twice the number of codes, meaning licensed representatives, isn't it pretty logical to assume you make twice the money? I would say. So that's a million eight. And then I would get promoted to SNSD. That's a little bit more money. That's about $2 million. Well, how long is it going to take me to double the code numbers? You go, oh, I don't know. Or 
took you 12 years to get 800, but that was from scratch. Now I got 800 people that want to license people. I think we can double it in two years. I really do. And if we double it in two years, my income's going to double in two years. So let's say I'm wrong and it's not two, it's three or four. Okay, I'm 37 years old. So if I do it in three years, I'll be 40. And I'll be making $2 million a year. Pretty good life, huh? Not bad. But you have to do those steps that I talked about, about the wedding list and explaining to people and using the list and the scripts and learning the objections and doing the hundred appointments and knowing the numbers and knowing that it's just in their nature to quit and not beating yourself up when they quit and keep working the numbers and working the numbers and working the numbers and working the numbers. If you do that, I promise you, I promise you, it'll be so worth it. I mean, it'll just blow your mind. I mean, I drive home to our development. Honest to God, we have the nicest entrance of any development I've ever driven into. And I've visited a lot of rich friends. It is amazing. And I drive home every night. I go, I still can't believe that I live here. I, I, I drive up to our home. And, and, and actually, I never just drive up, you know, to the house. I literally, every night that I drive home, I drive around the neighborhood and just look at it for like 20 minutes. I swear to God, every single night. I drive around, I go, Joe Girardi, the New York Yankee manager, lives there. And then uh, Rob, Roberto Luongo, now in Florida, we don't really watch hockey, but he's like a big-time hockey player that makes millions of dollars. He lives on our block. But I live with NHL hockey stars. I live with the manager of the New York Yankees. I, why? Because I recruited 300 people? Are you kidding me? That's a freaking joke. So now I'm going to go recruit another 300 people myself over X number of years. It'll double on its own, but when I add the other 300 into it, I don't expect to make $2 million a year. Why not make three, four, five, six? I believe there will be a time in Primerica individuals are making a million dollars a month. And you guys, the new guys that are just getting started, are that future. You are the ones that will be making eight, nine, ten million dollars, and you'll be talking about that you believe in the future. Others will be making twenty million dollars a year. It is a multi, multi million dollar opportunity. Stop treating it like a hobby, and start treating it like a real deal business, because that's what it is. Start treating it like a sport. I heard this from Jimmy one time. Start treating it like a world-class athlete. Arrive early, work hard, practice hard, stay late, do all the things, work out extra, and do all the things that a great athlete would do. And Trimerica will reward you like a great athlete's rewarded with world championship rings and multi-million dollar houses and hundred grand cars and and freedom and choices and options. It is my wish for you that each and every one of you guys do what I did and even more, do, do more than I did. Live larger than I live. Have more options than I got.